Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to create a Minecraft 1.16.5 server. However, this will work for any Minecraft version. So the first thing you want to do is open a web browser of your choice. So in my case, I'm going to be using Google Chrome. And you just want to go to minecraft.net forward slash download. Now from here, you want to scroll down and get go to server software and press Java edition server. Now this link here is going to be in the description if you want, but now all you have to do is download minecraft underscore server dot 1.16.5 dot jar. So you just left click this and as you can see it will download. So I'm going to cut when this is finished. So as you can see it's finished, now you just need to press keep and then you want to drag this to your desktop. So I'm just going to left click this drag to the bottom right hand corner to show my desktop and just drag it right here. So from here we want to make a new folder. So I'm just going to right click, go under new, and press folder. And now this folder can be called anything you want, but this is going to store all your server files. So in this case, I'm just going to call it server tutorial. And just now I must just drag the server.jar into this folder. As you can see, if I open this folder, I need to make a text document. So I just right click, go to new text document, and you want to call this start.txt. So just hit enter and you can now open this. So from here, we need to go back to your web browser and copy and paste this string of text. So you can just press Control C to copy it and Control V to paste. So as you can see, this basically just says to use Java. It says that it's going to start using this amount of RAM and the maximum amount of RAM it can use is this. So this is one gigabyte and one gigabyte. And then it says to read this jar file. However, if you look in your folder, this jar file does not exist. So we're going to have to rename this to server.jar because we want it to target that. So as you can see, if I hover over that and replace it with server. So if I wanted to make my server have more RAM, I would just have to change this to a higher digit. So I'm going to change this to two gigabytes. So as you can see, now this server would run with two gigabytes of RAM. However, I'm just going to leave it at one gigabyte because it's only going to be hosting me. From here, we just need to press File, Save As. Now we need to press where it says Save As Type and change this to All Files, and then change to Start.bat. So basically, this is going to create a batch file that's going to automatically run this command. So we can now delete this txt file as it's no longer necessary. So we just right click and delete. And from here, we need to run the Start.bat. Now keep in mind, you're going to have to have Java installed to run this file. So to install Java, if you don't have it already, you just need to go to your browser, go to java.com slash en. Now from here, you can accept the cookies and then all you have to do is press Java download. Now, obviously I already have this downloaded, but you need to make sure you get the 64 bit version so you can have more than 1.5 gigabytes of RAM on your server. Many people were having an issue in my last video that if they couldn't run the server, if they raised it higher than 1.5 gigabytes, and that's because they had 32-bit Java and not the 64-bit version. So I already have this downloaded, so I'm not gonna go ahead and download this, but I'll leave a link in the description to this website if you need it. So from here, I can just run the start.bat file, so I'm just gonna double-click it. And as you can see, it's gonna open this, and it might take a while. Now this is finished, you can see it created the eula.txt and the logs folder and server.properties. So to continue making your server, you need to accept the EULA, which is the end user license agreement. So by changing this to true, which is required, as you can see, you're indicating that you agree to this agreement. So you can read this yourself. However, I already have read it, so I'm not gonna waste your time. So we just need to press file and save this file. And we can now run the start.pat file again. This is gonna take slightly longer this time as it's gonna be generating the world files. So I will skip when it's done. As you can see, this is done. It took me just about 15 seconds. So now our server's up and running fully. However, I'm going to be stopping it so I can show you some server configuration. So as you can see, lots of new files have been generated. However, the only one you need to worry about mainly is server.properties. So you can just open this by right clicking, open with, and then use notepad. Press OK. So now we have the server.properties open and there's loads of information here. However, you don't really need to worry about most of these, but right here, you can change your default difficulty, default game mode, if you want to enforce a whitelist, the line nether, etc. In this case, I don't want to change a lot, but just 
for the sake of it, I'm going to change this, the max amount of players to join to two, because I'm not going to be adding more than two people to my server. So I just need to file and save. And now I can close this text document. Now my server is fully complete, I'm going to be starting up my server again. And every time you want to open your server, you just need to open the start.bat file. As you can see, my server is up and running again. However, you notice that it took me just under seven seconds this time, as I didn't have to regenerate the world spawn, as it's the same server. So now I'm just going to open Minecraft and show you how to join your server. As you can see, I now have Minecraft 1.16.5 open. So now I just need to open multiplayer and I need to add the server. So if you want to join on the PC that's hosting your server, all you have to do is use the IP address zero. So if I press done now, as you can see, my server is up and look, it has the two slots I set earlier. However, if you're on a computer that is on your network, however, it isn't the computer that's been hosted, you need to change the IP address to your IPv4. So you can find this by going into command prompt and typing in ipconfig and it will give you your IPv4 address. I'm not going to be doing that now because you can just do it yourself. But in my case, my IPv4 is 192.168.1.114. This is insensitive information because you could possibly have the same as mine. So you just press done. And as you can see, if I refresh my server, it's still working fine. So as you can see, I can just join my server. As you can see, I'm in and it's working perfectly fine. So if I want to operate myself so I can use commands such as game mode creative, it won't let me. So that's because I'm not an operator. So to change yourself and make yourself an operator, all you have to do is type in op and your username. So I'm on the account Goreg, so I just hit enter. As you can see, my account's now a server operator. So if I just go back into Minecraft, so if I just go back into Minecraft, as you can see, the console says that it's made me a server operator. And now if I try to do the game of creative command, I could do that fine. And I also have the ability to ban players, ban people's IP addresses, etc. Well, that's the end of the tutorial. Now, as you can see, I have a perfectly running server. However, you have to keep in mind that if you want people outside your network to be able to join, you need to open up the ports that you have assigned for your Minecraft server and server.properties. However, if you just want to play with people on your network, the server will work perfectly fine. If you find this video helpful in any way, please feel free to subscribe as I'd love to hit 1000 subscribers by the end of this year. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.